welcome to BC Woods Kids Tech Talk. Today we're looking at the Sapphire AMD Radeon HD6770. This is the Vapor X edition. It's a one gig card. Okay, it's a mid-range card compared to others. It has, like I said, one gigabyte of GDDR5, which is tons of memory there that you need for running things at high res. It is obviously ready for overclocking. It even comes pre-overclocked a little bit on the uh, GPU core clock. Uh, it comes at about 860 megahertz as opposed to 850, but you can overclock this further. Supports all the latest technologies, DirectX 11, the Ifinity, you can see there it has DisplayPort, and of course the HD 3D uh, support as well. So it's good to go for all the latest stuff, all the latest gamings, but the key thing here is obviously the VaporX cooling. Okay, all right, that's the main thing. Now, it, Sapphire has tons of other cards in the same series, same range. But again, the thing here that stands out is the VaporX. It's slightly overclocked at 860 megahertz. It is a 128-bit card. Okay, keep that in mind. Mid-range card. There's your uh, memory speed, 4800 megahertz effectively. So it is slightly faster, right? A little bit more on the uh, stream processors than other cards that I've reviewed that are entry level and mid-range level. So very good. It compares close to the GTX 460, I guess. But um, here you can see in the box, you get the Molex to six pin power connector. It only needs one 75 watt um, PCI Express power connector. Here is the DVI to VGA that it comes with in case you have an older monitor. So that's terrific. And of course the driver's manual, all of that, which you would expect. So great little bundle. Again, mid-range card runs about $139. That's the uh, manufacturer's suggested retail price. Here's the card in itself. It's a good looking card, dual slot. As you can see, it's got the famous fan in the center. I love these fans. It, they really do provide good cooling, I tell you, even though it's not encased. Um, the main thing here is the heat sink. Okay, as you can see there. Okay, and that plate that is touching the, uh, the GPU chip. Let me just flip this around so you can see it uh, better what I'm talking about here. So that plate at the bottom, that's the VaporX cooling happening right there. It's, there's a chamber in there. So number one here on this diagram is where the heat from that uh, GPU chip is touching that plate. And then of course there's water vapor in there that is condensing, rising. The fan at the top is cooling it off and then it's recycling the colder uh, water back down to cool down the uh, heat sink and the GPU eventually. So there's a recycling thing going on here to uh, keep this cool on the inside of that. So, you know, the heat is dissipated very nicely from here and um, VaporX has always been known to work very well when it comes to overclocking. Now, like I said, it uses less power than a GTX 460 actually, only one six pin uh, power connector there as you can see and uh, two DVI outs, one HDMI and the display port. So you got your Ifinity, good to go there. So you can hook up like three monitors, for example, at least if you wanted, no problems. One gig of GDDR5, tons of memory there. Here's my mainstream system, as you can see. So it's a mainstream card in a mainstream system. It's actually using a Sapphire board, which is terrific. You can see here the defaults, the, the temperatures are about 29 on idle and 48 degrees Celsius on full load at the default clock speeds. Okay, and you can see there, and it's very quiet. I was uh, actually quite impressed. When overclocking, temperatures hardly even budged. Okay, so the fan works a little bit harder, but uh, temperatures just go up like a few degrees. That's it. And you can see here the results. Now, when it comes to benchmarking, okay, we're looking at the GPU score only on 3D Mark Vantage. You can see 9629 is the default. You can overclock it and get higher results, of course. And uh, it gets very close to a GTX 460 when it comes to the results, as you can see. Definitely beats the previous generation cards. No, no uh, reason why it shouldn't, right? Because it's a, it's the latest thing. PC Mark 7 score. I look specifically at the entertainment score and the computation score to see how the GPU performs. Going forward, when I review new cards from now on, I'm always going to be comparing these types of uh, benchmarks as well, not just games. Okay. Now, if we look at the Haven benchmark, which tests the DirectX 11 and tessellation, here you can see the settings on high 1680 by 1050, and then here are the results at 1920 times 1080, again on high, using this machine, this test system. Okay, so they're decent results for a mainstream card, no doubt about it. Crisis 2 is very smooth on advanced settings. I had no complaints there, okay? Again, this is not the high-end, this is a mid-range card, and for, this, for a lot of people, this is good enough. 
Dragon Age was super smooth, okay, on high settings, as you can see there. And again, I had no complaints. Terrific card on it, great cooling. The famous Vaporex comes through again one more time, and I'd like to thank Sapphire for providing it, and I hope you enjoyed this video, and thank you for watching.